and it came to my intention as mine action because uh, this is an area where people relocated because of the flooding into a live minefield uh, with anti-personnel mines and the question in my head at the time was why would anyone choose to move into an anti-personnel minefield and the answer is no one would um, but they didn't feel they had a choice. One of the biggest challenges was time. Um, we had a very finite window to do this because the rains were only a few weeks ago. And um, we're standing in the sud, and over the last number of years there's been unprecedented flooding. The, the shape of the River Nile has actually changed, the shape of the sud has changed, it's probably not going back to the way it was. So really it was about taking advantage of that window. The ground you're standing on now, you can't really demine that manually, it's rock hard. So we needed a machine to do that. Now, the nearest machine is a long boat ride away, so we had to get that machine, which disturbs the ground and gets rid of the mines. We had to fix it, we had to find a barge, we had to get a team, and we had to get the barge up the river in time before the rain started. So it was a risk, it was a gamble, and I'm really happy to say that it worked out. And what we've done now is we've cleared this whole area behind us of anti-personnel mines. And there's life here because of the work that we do. We're responsible for about 75% of mine action, demining activities in South Sudan. This is just one example of it. This community here only had 1,500 people. Because of the work we have done in mine action, you now have over 10,000 people. This is huge. You can hear children laughing. People have complaints about the flooding and about agriculture and food and so forth but they wouldn't have those complaints if they weren't here. So the first step is the fact that they are here. They're here walking on safe ground. Every step they take is safe and the grounds they walk on are safe. Okay, what I want to say to you, no matter what title and position I hold, I can never divorce the fact that I'm an African woman. And that matters to me. And listening to them, listening to the issues they raised, I, I felt it, I felt it in my heart. The fact that a woman in 2022 will have to either go and find somewhere else to live when she's seven months pregnant or take a 50-50 chance of dying because she won't have access to safe delivery. That's painful. In 2022, that's painful.